Hello, everyone. Um, first community call of the month, second one of the year. And of course, we have issues with daylight savings. If only everyone would go to UTC, all our problems would be solved. Um, but unfortunately, half the world is in daylight savings and the other half is not. Um, but you can catch up on, with this recording. Today on the agenda, we have some updates for everyone. Um, so we did some changes with the vesting. We actually renamed it to lockup. Um, so not confusing with legal terms of vesting and did a new implementation. Uh, we're doing some epoch stuff. We want to give updates on store v2, server v2, IVL v2, where we are with that, um, where we are with the Olympus update, uh, Olympus release. Um, that is the next release, um, the number of the release we still haven't decided on. So if you have um, number ideas other than V1, um, then I'm all ears. Um, but 0 0.69. <laughs> so that that's going to be the last one. So it's like where the SDK is technically the core SDK is skipping V1 and going straight to V2 with store V2, server V2, and IVL V2. Um, and so the core part, and so what is the SDK today will be more of a testing util. And I think the last number of that should be like, patch number 69, no, sorry, minor minor number 69, patch number 420, and then that is the final release of the import Cosmos SDK. Um, all, of course, only jokes. We're not going to do that unless it's put up to governance and forced. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then we want to kind of touch on, on PBTS. So the release of Comet V1 is in, including proposal based timestamps. So if you haven't been attending the common calls, I'm going to give a small overview of what that is and what that entails and some of the changes coming to the SDK and some other changes that could be done. And the final point, if we have enough time, I want to talk about uh, removing the AuthZ grant message, uh, AuthZ grant of the grant message. Um, we've gotten reports that this is a honeypot for scammers, where if they get you to sign something, they get you to sign you authorizing your account, authorizing your your authorizing the grant message on your account to another account, and then the scammers have complete access of your account. Um, so I wanted to see what people thought, and also just if it's okay with people to do that, or we mark it unsafe in some capacity. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, actually, um, let me think real quick. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Um, so starting off with vesting and lockup. So as part of the upcoming release, we're including our new amount, our new accounts module. And the new accounts module is a generalized accounts module, which allows you to write accounts. Um, it's right there in the name. And it's um, what we did here is, first of all, we cleaned up some bank and vesting issues that have been present since the inception of Cosmos, specifically when another account, when user A is sending funds to user B, the user B account may not be present on chain, and bank would then create the account. And this has caused people squatting accounts, squatting addresses, and so on, that which caused other issues. And teams like IBC, Cosmosm, Edmos had to do a lot of preventative work to do this. Um, if you're working with a VM, you may be um, ran into this issue. And so we removed that. So now when you send a bank message to an account that doesn't exist, the account, the bank will send the funds to the user, but then the user needs to send a bank send the message and then their account is created. So it's a bit inverse, but it cleans up some security uh, issues that were present and caused issues with teams like IBC and Cosmosm. But in the accounts um, um, module, so we introduced um, lockup, a module that replaces the vesting account. So um, another issue with vesting is when vesting was created, um, some a small history lesson, when, vest when vesting was created, it was never meant to be used at, on a live network. It was meant to be used for Genesis and not, be, not being used for in, the, in a message server. His, uh, years went on, message server was added for convenience, and 
that's where the some other issues arose with vesting accounts creating accounts that don't exist um, and people being able to squat it. Um, and so what we did was we removed the ability to create vesting accounts using the legacy vesting module. The legacy vesting module is still present because there are still vesting accounts in existence, but we migrated all the current vesting accounts to an account uh, lockup and lockup uh, some lawyers recommended we rename it to vest to rename it to locking because vesting in legal terms is a lot different than what we had as a vesting account. I think um, Agoric might be happy about this one. I think they, they brought it up in the past as well. And so we migrated um, the accounts. So we, as you see here, we have our continuous locking account, our delayed locking account, periodic locking account, and our permanent locking account. We have a base, uh, where are you? Let me just, I need to find it. I think it's lockup.go. Um, we have our new base lockup and the new base lockup account provides you, it tracks its own staking. Um, so all the logic that was in the previous vesting account, but the staking logic was held within the bank module. So you had this separation and confusion between components was then moved into here. And uh, you don't have to use the base lockup. This is the generic. You can also implement everything from scratch. And that's meant to alleviate some issues we've identified with the current vesting design. It's also a lot easier to create new vesting accounts. For example, um, we can look at app.go. Office. Yeah, so here we can see we're creating the accounts keeper. This is different from the auth keeper as we see here. And here we are adding new accounts. So if you want to add a new account, you can add it just by doing this. And your account can do any. Um, I see one person wants to join. Awesome, awesome. Any questions on that? Amazing. No questions means we're doing something right. Uh, epochs. So we are delving into the realm of epochs and we did some preliminary research and see what people are using. And we're actually, um, where are you? Uh, we're actually working on upstreaming the epochs module. Um, and that will be the new canonical epochs module. Many of you guys are using it already. And so we didn't want to cause disruption for people's chains to be able to switch epochs module. And, and, and so we did that. Um, any questions, concerns, or feedback around the osmosis epoch module? Sounds good. Awesome. Oh, go ahead. A quick module. So, can we have controllable? So, like, epochs module can. I'm losing you. You're, you're cutting off. Um, you want to write your message in chat and then I can answer it? Uh, yes, sure. Oh, maybe, maybe you just came back. You want to try? So, what now? Oh no, you're st you're still cutting off. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Um, let me grab you that. Um, Here you can see the PR. Yes. Um, so the Osmosis Epoch works in the way that you register, uh, you can register a day hook, a week hook, four day hook, one month hook, and then modules will provide a hook 
for um, that when you're doing when the epoch is called, then um, it calls like you it will call the hook and then your module will be listening for the hook and then execute accordingly. Um, and so modules can hook in dynamically or hook in in app in app .go. Um, so it's really like really dynamic. And so since this is already designed and already in the wild, um, when actually Googling uh, Epoch and looking into other teams' Epoch modules, everyone is saying they're using the Osmosis one. And so, like I said, the least amount of disruption is to the community is to just work with the existing. Um, bum, bum, bum. Awesome. Store v2, or Robert, does that help answer your, your question? Awesome, perfect. Um, store v2, um, we are nearing completion. Um, we're actually working on integrating store v2 into server v2. And um, if you weren't present on a previous call, what store v2 is, is separation of commitment and storage. And so the state machine really only cares, the state machine does it itself does not care about needing the commitment when it's doing a state transition. It only cares about state commitment after all execution is done, therefore the state root or the app hash. And so the state machine is working off a raw database, um, PebbleDB, RocksDB, um, SQLite, um, or anything you'd, anything you'd like to implement yourself. Um, and the state commitment is using IVL. Um, it's it, you have the option between IBL v1 and IBL v2. You may have seen um, some talk about IBL v2. Um, let me link you to the discussion. Um, Matt from the SDK team did testing on the Osmosis mainnet and provided benchmark results from the outcome. Um, so lots of learnings. Um, Matt is already excited, excited because he has ways to improve the speed, but we want to first give you the first step of give you the first level of speed. And then the next one, um, if people want to go faster, we can um, discuss about allocating time towards that. Um, so yeah, that's store v2 and IVL v2. Um, server v2, like I mentioned, we're integrating it. If you'd like to read more about server v2, let me grab you the RFC. Um, it gives a high level overview of everything of the overall design. Um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, no, not you. It is right here. Um, and so let me add it to the HackMD. You can give that a read, leave any comments, any feedback. Um, we're already looking at integrating with Store v2, and um, the team is working on getting the node started. And so it is very nice, simple, and easy to grok, a lot easier than base app. Any questions on the V2 story? IBL V2, store V2, server V2? Awesome, awesome. Olympus. Olympus is the name of our next release. Um, the next release is um, we, are, we are working towards an alpha. Uh, alpha and beta by the end of the month. And so we're working on integrating Comet V1 um, and working um, with the team. There's just a few things that we need changed on Comet. And so we're just, they already opened PRs. And so we're just uh, waiting for those PRs to be, to be merged. And then we will continue the integration. Um, it is fairly straightforward. Um, the There's a lot of ergonomic fixes, a lot of API cleanups. Um, I'm not sure. So I'm still talking to the team about including the adding BLS signatures in the next release, because there is like one minor breaking change. It's just the signature size goes from 64 bytes to 90, 
92, I think 96 or 92, I can't remember exactly. Um, 92, and the 92 blades. And so the how the block is constructed is a bit different um, in terms of sizing, but um, BLS, yes, it is around the corner. It runs, we have it running on testnet already, um, but this is without the aggregation. Aggregation would need to come later with some changes to the P2P layer um, and specifically PBTS. Um, we are we will work with the IBC team to integrate Olympus. Um, so the main changes around Olympus, let me share my screen again, and I can walk through the upgrade doc. So we have a few new features, a few new um, API cleanups, and we're aiming to not break as much as the last two releases, so I apologize for that. Um, but the next release and the future releases will become a lot easier. Um, first and foremost, um, we merged a feature called unordered transactions, which uh, allow you to submit. Uh, oh, yeah. There we go. Thanks. Um, OK, so we did some, uh, we moved some globals. So we all love, we all dislike the globals in SDK. And so we are working on removing that. Um, the Zondex team has been hard at work around that. So there are a few API breaks, but it is for the better. Um, and so that will help clean up a lot of code and allow you to write more ergonomic code. Some other things are we, got rid of the app module basic manager. Um, now it's just module manager. Um, the above items, the legacy amino codec and register interfaces are just on the module manager and they're optional before they were boilerplate that needed to happen. Um, we, um, yeah, um, anti-handlers. So we merged a few anti-handlers and this actually saved significant amount of gas. So we, we merged the gas consumption, increased sequence decorator into the SIG verification because they were all getting, uh, they were all doing gets on the off module. And, and so if we merge them, we're doing one get instead of three. And so that saved significant amount of gas. Um, we had a new feature called unordered transactions. Unordered transactions is the idea that you don't have to use nonces with your transactions. They have a uh, lifespan. They are um, what uh, I've mentioned before, mortal transactions, meaning they have an end of life. Um, an immortal transaction is something that does not have an end of life, and the transaction can technically be replayed if there's no replay protection indefinitely. Um, of course, there is replay protection. To add this, um, this is how these are the changes you need to make. Um, it is safe, it's tested, it works as expected. Um, where are you? Okay, so some of the other changes. Uh, so we have a, a compatibility matrix. So if you do want to use server v2, there are some API changes you need to do to your modules. Um, of course, it's it's optional. So if you continue working with base app, um, so SDK v0, um, you don't have to make these changes. These changes are state compatible. So you can do them over time, meaning you can upgrade to Olympus and over the next couple of weeks, months, you can slowly prepare your repository for server v2 and then do the, do the migration to server v2 at a later date. Specifically, some of those API changes are, we pass this environment variable, as you can see here and here. And within this environment variable, we have all the services that a module may need and that may be using unwrap uh, SDK context to get those. And so you do need to begin using runtime environment um, in order to get, in order to um, be server v2 compatible. And it's a non state breaking change. You can make the changes and still do releases. Um, also, here, we th the routers are in here as well. So now your module constructor may be taking many parameters, and now it's reduced to one parameter, and then everything is in there that used to be on context. Um, we 
uh, we did a small cleanup on our interface registry. Um, we're going to change the name just before release, but this just absolves us from importing uh, codec types um, into the modules. And so there is a world where if you are writing unit tests, there you could write a module that does not need to import the Cosmos SDK. And so that's been a long coming item. So your modules span versions and don't have to worry about SDK versions. Um, from init genesis, export genesis, default genesis, and validate genesis, we remove the codec. The codec is already present in modules. So this is a minor breaking change, um, but it is present. Uh, modules have all modules um, have been spun out into their own Go modules. So this is the API breaking change. Specifically in distribution, we removed the community pool from distribution. So distribution is only around distribution of fees and rewards. The protocol pool is the community pool module. Um, we there's a few couple, there's two different styles of funding users there. And so uh, the one is a kind of a dev fund that can be used um, to fund development of the teams working on the protocol. And the next one is right now, if we look at the Cosmos Hub or other chains, they have to move the community pool funds from the community pool out into a wallet. And then that wallet needs to handle distribution, um, potentially multi-sig committee and all this stuff. Instead, you can do that within the protocol pool directly. These are the core changes within 50. Um, and it's not too deep. And that is mainly because a lot of the work in the last uh, quarter um, has been spent around store v2 and server v2. Any questions around Olympus? So alpha beta, by the end of the month, we could do an RC, but we don't want to press it. We want to be very sure that this release is safe and of a high quality. No questions. Sounds good. Oh, how about full release? Um, like in terms of the full release of the next the next release date. Um, like we would be ready by end of April. Uh, sorry, not end of April. We'd be ready by beginning of April to mid April for a final release. But we want to have we want to make sure um, that our um, partners IBC. Um, Cosmosm are ready for the release as well. Um, and we will be helping them. And so and so we aim potentially, uh, like, don't quote me, um, end of April could be a date where we're all ready for the release. Um, but like I said, like um, server v2, store v2, IVL v2 are their own Go mods. And so um, there's add one month, potentially. <laughs> you are right. Um, and so. Um, these things are not are non blockers for the final release. Um, we will begin QA pretty soon, um, and right after we merge Comet V one, and then we should be getting closer and closer. Um, PBTS, so proposer based timestamps. Um, proposer based timestamps is a feature within Comet. Um, it's been long awaited. So right now in Comet, they use the notion of BFT time. And BFT time takes the median. So when you're assigning a vote as a validator, you need to include your local timestamp. And then what the protocol does, it takes a median of all the votes, timestamps, and then that is the, the time of the state machine. Um, and while time is used, time is important, there are edge cases where validators, if they um, Collude could skew time. And so essentially what PBTS says is the proposer will propose a time in the block, and then everyone will say if they agree with this time or if they disagree with this time. What this does is a few things. First of all, um, everyone's vote becomes similar. So everyone's voting on the same proposal um, with the same data. And that allows us to aggregate signatures. So currently, if we try to aggregate signatures with every validator having a custom uh, unique timestamp, this would essentially slow down verification because 
um, the last time I checked, we wouldn't be able to aggregate those signatures. Now we will be able to aggregate those signatures with something like BLS, um, and that will allow us for improved efficiencies around verification. The next part is since it is safe to use time within the state machine, it can't be skewed or colluded on, um, we can begin using time more effectively within the state machine. For example, the Mint module. We all love the Mint module because it, it's issuing new tokens. The part we hate is we have to calculate how many blocks in a year based off on our, our expected block time, and then that will be the blocks we input in the Mint module. Because it was unsafe, because if a validator is colluded, push the time forward, then we could essentially um, we could essentially issue more tokens um, than what was expected. The other part is since it's a blocks per year and the and the timeout commit is like a freely thing between the node operator, node operators could skew block times in order to issue more blocks, issue more tokens or, or slow down the issuance. And so this was kind of a problem. Um, and so with Mint, um, we will be able to use time. So we will be able to exact how, how much issuance is within one year and go forward with that. We can use time within upgrades. Um, so there's a lot of different areas where we'll be able to use time instead of block height or blocks per year. Um, and this also unlocks a lot of new features that people can develop. I know potentially people were developing everything based off time. So it's just making it safer. Um, we are thinking, so the Comet team did make this optional. So optional in the sense that you can either use PBTS or you can keep with BFT time. Um, the part of using PBTS is that there is a bit more reliance on the node operators. Um, specifically, NTP servers need to be enabled for everyone. Of course, servers kind of like enable NTP, like um, your server provider like automatically has NTP. I think most servers have NTP enabled these days. Um, so that's like one thing to be aware of. The other part is if the if you don't have NTP server enabled, then your synchrony time, so in within what bound of your local time versus the proposed time are you willing to accept as correct? Five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, and if they're outside that, then you would you would reject the proposal. Therefore, you could end up in multiple rounds. So there is a bit of um, uh, carefulness that needs to happen. The team made it optional. I wanted to get a feeling for people if it's OK in the SDK that we default QBTS on. Um, what do people think about that? I think that's a good feature. Yeah, I agree. It it would be great to uh, uh, be able to just specify a time for an upgrade. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, I'll write up an, uh, a more detailed issue and then like present it to the community just to get more feedback. But yeah, we're leaning towards like going forward. The Cosmos SDK defaults to PBTS, and so we can begin building or um, redoing some of our features in the SDK to use time. That's awesome. Thank you. Any questions on time? Not a final. Finally, um, we have removing auth Z grant, the grant message. I'm not sure how to best word this. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, um, we've been approached by a few teams saying that team people are getting scammed because the uh, we are entering a world where there's a lot of retail users, mom and pops coming to crypto, and they're getting scammed, especially with all these airdrops. Um, and the scam is basically that they auth see their own account to grant messages. Uh, the, uh, they auth see their account, sorry, they auth see another account to grant messages on your behalf. And so they grant, I think, every message or only like staking messages and bank messages so they can try and steal funds. Um, and then they make a bot that if you send funds into the account, they will automatically send them out. So you can't do the revoke transaction. Um, it's, this isn't a clean, like fix all solution 
to prevent the uh, a user from authorizing the grant message, but it could alleviate some of the issues. Um, wanted to hear people's thoughts on this and also if people use this feature. And Jim, do you know from the yeah our Gorg side if you guys use this? Uh, no, I don't believe we use that feature. Amazing. We've got some pretty extensive Aussie code at Strange Lab for managing relayer wallets and validator rewards. We don't mm -hmm. grant the grant message ever. Yeah. I don't know a use case for that. It seems like a a very edge casey use case. Um, and so just to be safe, we're, we're discussing about preventing it if you want to um, here's the issue. And I'm going to share it and, and post it in, the, in a few Slack channels um, just to see if anyone uses it. Um, it'd be nice to make it safer. If you guys have ideas on like other ways to make the state machine safer for retail people coming in and potentially not looking at what they're signing or like various features, I know it's like almost an impossible thing to prevent. But if you guys have seen something, would be all ears to try and help um, clean up that world. Well, as, as long as people are signing stuff that they don't understand, it's, yeah. it's going to be a losing battle. So the long-term solution is better legibility. But uh, getting rid of a, a, something that's impossible to, to, to fix would be a good step. Yeah. Um, Puneet? Um, I might be saying your name incorrectly. Do you want to talk? Yeah. Do you want to mention? Um, what you said in the chat? Yeah, uh, for a while ago, we, we are not using it, uh, but uh, there was a, uh, like, if a protocol owned account wanted to, you know, do transactions using a, a multisig, uh, because the participants of multisig are not, you know, changeable, we uh, wanted to give a grant or Z of a random protocol account to one of the multisig, and it can just grant someone else and revoke its own, and so on. So you can keep changing the multisig address itself, and the uh, like. The protocol address remains the same. Uh, but but we never ended up using it, so it's fine. Or did we lose my Margo? I can hear you. We might have lost Marco. Oops, lost internet there. Um... So yeah, like I was saying, we're working on an on-chain multisig um, with the accounts module. Um, so uh, Faku is kind of like working on a design. Um, and so that should help. And then we can do like key rotation, user rotation, kind of like all this stuff in a very simple manner. Um, so there is like some alleviation for that use case um but yeah um I'll, I'll post it and i remember sunny saying something about um sunny saying something about wanting you to have like the grant message so you can grant another account but i think we should actually potentially the safer thing is like to develop sub keys via the accounts module so it's like you can create a sub key that has permission to do x y and z um some some form of that would be cleaner than um, granting everything like we do now. 
Is that a rewrite of the existing multi sig? Uh, no. Um, I mean, Bakker, do you want to present your thinking around it? I'd love to hear this. We're we need we need something like this. We were thinking about building it. Sure. So it's basically um, it's uh, too early to to show like a definitive design, but it's basically I'm borrowing lots of ideas from Yossi Safe and also like Dao Dao. So it's going to be more uh, a bit Dao ish kind of thing. So we'll be able to to set participants. Participants will ha will have um, different voting powers. You will be able to um, to set the quorum and threshold to to pass um, like a proposal. We we could have a proposal, or we could have that that people can vote on chain and get it to pass. Or we could uh, also have have it to behave like today in which you gather all the signatures of, uh, of chain and then you just push them all together on chain and it gets executed right away. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's basically that. Uh, oh yeah. And, and something else I, I, I'm exploring it's, um, uh, allowing to use other signing algorithms. Um, I don't have that, uh, fully fleshed out, but, I think it should be possible and it would be interesting to at least uh, give the option there. Does that like fit your fit the need of people, but also Jack? Yeah, that was helpful. I, I'll just watch this work as it evolves. Awesome, awesome. Um, do people I mean, that idea of a standard account type with that allows for multi six with key rotation is great. One feature mm -hmm. I've been thinking about on the multi six side recently that I don't know if I heard uh, Fichundo mention um, was uh, it'd be nice to do the signature coordination on chain. Yeah, it's like a minor little bit of state um we might like that that will be on chain for sure yeah 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 we might yeah, have yeah, something so, better for 50 that allows that <laughs> yeah so the idea is that we can do both also, uh, so we can do the signature coordination on chain and off chain um just to like uh allow the current behavior and also like this uh new behavior that it's going to be more like uh news is safe or like um no, sorry, I think NYC uh, like, does it off chain, like a uh, DAO DAO kind of thing, which you yeah. just sign on chain. I mean, th these types of functionalities are critical because, like, think about all the admin accounts we want for stuff like managing IVC security, like the ability to do client swaps or things like that. Uh, POA chains will want this for managing the POA set. There's a lot of other use cases for committees. And with committees, you want to add people, remove them. You need to be able to do key, yeah. key rotation. And like, yeah, I mean, like this is a standard set of features. I think the way you outlined is great. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, like uh, we have been talking about a world in which the accounts module, we have a base account there. And that base account is the replacement for the off module. Um, and like, users can migrate if they want to, or it can be something like in their first transaction that migrates automatically for them. Or we can do like, this is still like early thinking, but that allows us to like, we can upgrade the accounts, we can add key rotation a lot simpler. Um, and so there's a lot of features that can be added with where the current auth module is kind of like an issue to be able to like add new features. And it's quite complex for very little return. Good. Sorry. Is there an angle? Oh, you're uh, still uh, coming out. So, uh, um, uh, 
it's it's hard to it's hard to understand you. All good. You you want to type it out in, in chat and then um, can respond. Yeah, like you can use groups if you want. Um, I think groups is, groups is very. You can use groups like it's 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 a module that exists. Um, we're I don't think we're going to add new features to groups. Um, so like. I think it's cleaner to write custom. You can use groups for the multi-sig, but a lot of chains don't really want to use groups. Um, and instead, they can just use like a on-chain multi-sig. You, you'd have to ask the chain. Um, I I've only know of like one or two chains using groups. I mean, the, the accounts module is something that will be added to all chains. So it's like vesting. Um, I mean, like, I, I don't think the groups module, the groups module is very customized. So it has ORM and it has like its custom math library and it's very complex to understand. Um, yeah. And I so, think that Robert, the reason why they're doing this is that the groups module didn't solve this problem for people. Like I really wanted the groups module to solve a bunch of our problems, but we can't rely on it for a wide variety of reasons. And other chains have found exactly the same thing. It's not that groups doesn't solve the problem. It's that as a piece of software, it's very hard to use. It's very hard to include in your project. It brings in a ton of other dependencies and there's no front end support. The integrations are rough. There's a number of reasons why groups module doesn't solve this issue. We've been we've been working with wallets on the account stuff and like Josh Kepler, uh, like Kepler and Leap are like huge fans of the accounts module. Um, there's teams like Leap and Kujira who are implementing passkey support via the accounts module. Um, so there's, uh, already people building stuff. This other part, the other really cool part with, uh, the accounts module is you can, uh, it's, it's two versions of AA. So it's an authentication abstraction. You can do authentication any way you want, and it's an account abstraction. So there is the feature of a bundler. So a chain could provide a bundler or a wallet could provide a bundler where maybe you pay a subscription for a certain amount of transactions a month. And then you then every time you, you broadcast a transaction, it goes to the bundler and the bundler will take care of broadcasting it to the correct chain. Um, so this is, oh, I forgot the EIP, um, but it's very similar to account abstraction with the bundler in Ethereum. Um, that's where some of the inspiration all around the bundler design came from. And so it's not only accounts, but uh, authentication abstraction and account abstraction. Um, so we have 12 minutes that wraps up everything on the agenda. Does anyone have any topics they'd like to bring up for discussion? Any questions they would like to ask um, on maybe a question they need for their chain? Um, this is just a free 10 minutes of technical support from the SDK team. What's up, Jack? Um, we released Spawn this week. Um, I, I know a number of folks on this call have commented on it. Um, would you guys be interested in a live demo from Reese in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, let's schedule it for the next um, uh, team call, uh, the next um, cool. community call. Awesome. Yeah, we can circle up on that. But if anyone has questions, happy to answer. Thank you. Anyone else or anyone just want to give a shout out to what they're building? OK, we can end uh, 10 minutes early. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And enjoy the rest of your day or early weekend. Oh, Ryan. I was looking for the emoji to wave. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand.
<laughs> awesome guys have a good day thank you thank awesome. you bye bye everyone bye bye